Hey guys, Nina Zapala here. This is a place to talk about spiritual personality typing. This week on the blog, I am talking about Bridgerton. I was sick last week. I'm still kind of coming out of whatever I had, but I, I thought, you know, I want to do something fun because I think so many of us, I think that's why Netflix has gotten so crazily popular because we're, we're trying to have some fun in our lives. And, uh, I did get into Bridgerton this, this past week. So I'm doing a, a look-see on Kate. Hmm, who is Kate? If you've been watching it, you know who exactly I'm talking about. Um, I'm just gonna look at my computer because I have a couple notes in here I don't want to forget. Um, but Kate, Miss Kate Sharma, Anyway, um, she's quite the character, isn't she? And it's so funny because I, I would gravitate to her because it's got, I'm like, my personality type is, is quite similar to hers. Very different, but so, still similar. Um, so we're gonna look at what her type is. And romantically, how her type is influencing her choices in her romantic relationships um, and in her life. Like, what how she's with her sister and her mother and and the people that she meets along the way and i'm talking about this personality typing thing because it is so prevalent <laughs> it is you i mean it is you know a, an aspect of who you are it's the human aspect of who you are the being aspect of who you are is what i talk about in spirituality so you're a human being it's an eight. It's just who you are. You don't have to try to be spiritual. You are spiritual. You have a spark of God inside of you. So I'm trying to change perceptions here in a positive light to get us to start thinking about how gorgeous our personality type is. And I really kind of like doing it through these um, popular series because it's the character is so on display, it lets me go in there and show you, just point out aspects. And hopefully you'll see, you'll can start resonating some of these aspects with your personality type. No, you're probably not the same type. This is a very rare type. Um, so you're probably not that type. But the interesting thing about that is, well, how am I putting myself in positions like that? How am I holding myself back? How am I keeping myself stuck? How am I living in my fear? and not my divine spark. So it, I know it's really kind of interesting when you start getting into this. So Kate, Kate Sharma, I believe she is an INTJ. And I did a Google search and, and some people say she's an ENTJ. Here's why I believe she's an INTJ. And no one will ever know until she gets tested. And since she's a fictional character, will we ever know? The point is, it's just to take a look-see at how your personality type influences who you are, right? This is what this is about. This is kind of like a fun psychological exercise that we don't often see and that we don't get exposed to. So why I think she sees an INTJ instead of an ENTJ, and there's an, this is a close call because they're sister types. An ENTJ is more prone since they have this N, N is intuition, okay? That's this how it works in, in um, Myers-Briggs. It's a perceive, it's, it's how you collect information, right? So N is all about possibilities, opportunities, new things. They're always diving, theories. They're diving into all these things, right? Um, and with an ENTJ, they're open to a lot of theories, which is very, which very resonates into the ex extrovert aspect of that trait, because that's how that trait is. It's more prone to looking at things and more active, and um, it, it's out in the external world, so it's going to explore more. While I, the introverted trait, is much more complex. It's going to go in and zero in on one thing, one opportunity and take a look at that. So that's what Kate's doing here. She is, she is dogged and determined 
to get her sister married with a dowry, right? Hey, what what a show, man! I just I, I don't know. It's it amazes me how all this went down with women, but I think there's some good sides to it and bad sides. But whatever, I'm not going to go there right now on that. But um, but Kate is very dogged in that, so she's very determined. Um to get her sister married with a nice dowry. Uh, another thing why this tray is a little confusing is that even though she is an introvert, she is talkative. Like she'll, she will talk. Like if there's something of interest, like with her and Lord Anthony with the, with the, at the races, the horse races, she knew everything about the horse races. She was like, dun, 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 because that's one of her interests. And see this type, the INTJ, when they have an interest, they're intense about their interests. And they will know it from the inside out and the outside in. So she could easily speak on that because that was one of her interests. And she's going, oh, oh, oh. And it was interesting. And she was right, which I love. <laughs> you know, she did pick the winning horse. But see, but that's just, and that's a little bit of confusing because if you look at her and you go, oh, she's an extrovert. Well, no, she's not an extrovert. So, so we can't judge that. You know, we, can, we cannot judge people and we shouldn't be judging people anyway, but we do. We just like, oh, well, they're an extrovert. They, you know, they can talk and be a, well, in some instances, this is not true. This is not true. So there could be another reason why some people are typing her an ENTJ when in reality, I believe my two cents, take what you want. She's an INTJ. So listen, if you're having problems, even though you've, like I took a, I took an MBI test because I went, I went and got certified. Um, the first one came out correct. And the second one came out like, I was like, what the hell is this? And I went to my instructor, he goes, Just there, I don't know what that is. But see what happened was, I was in a really weird mood when I took the test that day. And that mood reflected my test results. Because it was skewed into the mood I was. So oftentimes when I get people coming to me for like a soul session or even through like um i'm really starting to put out my travel session so like what's your travel personality which is a, which is just a fun thing um they come to me and they don't really know their personality type. they think they're this but when in reality when i start digging deeper and start questioning them they're not and this is and this is very common and the reasons are varied um but it's a lot of times it's because of childhood, the family you were raised. We kind of take on that, their beliefs and values. It becomes an inherited way of us, for us to be. I, I want, we need to start dropping those inherited beliefs and values and get real with ourselves, be ourselves, find our true selves. This is, this is what we're here for. This is part of our sacred purpose. So if you want a reading on that, just visit my website and uh, go to my calendar page and we can get you on my schedule. So that would be fun. Anyway, so this is why I typed Kate the way I typed her. So let's get into her traits, okay? This is going to be fun. Um, so we kind of touched on um, introverted intuition. These are, okay, first of all, let me back up. So everyone has a functional stack. There's four traits that make up our personality type. She's an INTJ. So how this goes for Kate, it's introverted intuition. We'll get into that. Extroverted thinking, introverted feeling, and extroverted sensing. So what I'm trying to teach, what I'm trying to show you, especially if you're an especially if you're an enthusiast of Myers Briggs personality typing. Many discuss this as a functional stack. I'm not denying that. That is a true statement. But they have it as a stack. I like to call that your functional circle. Because it's the circle of how you use it. It's not just a stack. And see, the stack is very logical thinking and I'm not a logical thinker. I'm a theorist, a theorist more than a, a factual, logical thinker. Um, but what the functional stack is true to the fact that a stack is the, the way, uh, oh, I'm trying to get used the right word, um, uh, how you use your, um, traits in order of preference. 
So the dominant trait, and I'll talk about this too, because I can get into this. This is gonna be, like, I could do four hours on this. But the dominant trait is the trait you use the most often. So I call that your essential self. That's essentially, in a nutshell, the big picture look at who you are. And then there's an auxiliary trait. That's the second trait you use the second most. It's very closely related to your dominant trait. So that I call that your harmonious self. Because it's very harmonious with your essential self. It's a beautiful way of you to be in the world. If you can have those two things healthy and functioning together, you are like way ahead of most people in the population. Because people don't get this stuff. I want you to get this. It's really important now because I want you to have a seat at the new earth table. It's really important that you're a part of this new earth because as we can see, just look around you, what we used to know is crumbling. It is no longer relevant to the, to the earth we're gonna create, which is so exciting. So you have to know your personality type. Okay, this tertiary trait is twice removed from your essential self, right? So one, two, three, it's twice removed from your, from your essential self. Um, and I look at that trait as um, the, um, an emerging self. This is, um, you're emerging into this. This is a trait that you, that you can gain great spiritual growth from. That, and a lot of people, don't, that's why I call these circular traits, because it's a circle. It's a circle of becoming who you are, right? So that's what makes that exciting. And then, so it's emerging. Right? And then we have the last trait that's, that's, all, that's the fourth removed from your essential self. And I call that trait your contrary trait. Sorry, it's blowing in the wind. Wind is blowing all my stuff away. Um, why I call that contrary is it's contrary to your essential self. It is the exact opposite of your essential self. Another huge, if you want spiritual growth, start examining those traits. You'll get spiritual growth. Right? Most most people that um, are in this space of personality typing really focus on the first two traits. Of course, they're the most dominant. They're the most prominent in your personality type. I'm not denying that. But if you start looking at that emerging self and the contrary self, that's where you're going to have spiritual growth. That is where you're going to gain the most spiritual growth for yourself. Let's go back to Kate. But I wanted to, I have to teach you this because I feel it's important for you to get the message that I'm trying to um, relate to you about Kate. So this is interesting. Um, so Kate, her, her, like we said, her central self or the dominant trait is introverted intuition. So she's all about possibilities, opportunities, opportunities. And can you see how prevalent this is in her life? How essential it is to her. This is an essential point in her existence. She is looking for the opportunity to get Edwina, her sister, that dowry. See how prominent that is? It takes up a lot of space in your life. So if you don't know that trait, you're not intimate with that trait in a healthy, balanced way, I know. That's where your life starts, you know, you start having hiccups. You're going down a road that you don't want to go down. So that's important. So I'm just trying to show you the parallel with Kate. Okay, and her second trait, that harmonious self that we talked about, right? The auxiliary trait, the one that's second. Right behind the dominant trait is an auxiliary trait, or what I call the harmonious trait, okay? Um, that's extrovert thinking. So how does extrovert thinking work? Well, it's very left-sided, you know? And already there's a little bit of... Uh, there's a little bit of friction between these two, okay? But the first trait, like I was speaking of the dominant trait, for her, it's, it's how, she get, how she collects information, right? And that's dominant in her. So she loves it. So in that trait, most people look at these people, look at INTJs as very pragmatic and stiff and cold. Having that trait, just so you know, <laughs> creates behind the in the mind behind this exterior facade a very colorful person 
They are very dynamic. They're very imaginative. So let's not judge a book by its cover. What a relevant, profound statement, but it's very true. But she is very colorful. There's a lot going on behind the mind here with that um, introverted intuition. That secondary trait was extroverted thinking. It, and you can see this in Kate because extroverted thinking works is a very, they're very opinionated. They will, they, and again, this is why people could confuse them for an extrovert, but because it's extroverted in nature, right? But they're very opinionated. They'll speak their truth and um, they can be emotionless because they don't have that emotional thing. It's not a dominant feeling. It's not a dominant trait for them. It's not first or second, it's third. But still, like they're opinionated. They're gonna they're gonna speak their truth. Because this trait is all about finding their truth. So they'll speak it. They're not afraid. They are not afraid. And guess what? They don't really care what other people think. Woohoo! I know. I need to get more like that because sometimes I'm like, well, I don't know if I should say that. You know, that's all bullshit. And that's part of my way I was raised, right? But this is very interesting. You see this in Kate. Like, she'll stand up. Like, she got really pissy with Mr. Anthony Bridgerton when she heard him speaking of women like they're cattle. Like, she went, you know, she said it right in front of him. And she repeated it to several other people. So that really, that triggered her. That triggered her. And the trigger, this is what's really cool about this, the trigger goes back to her childhood. The way her father was chided for not having that step in society, for not being of royalty. So see how that all works? So yes, that triggered her and for good reason. She brought that all back into childhood. So she did not like that conversation at all. She felt it was very disrespectful and it hit her heart. It hurt her childhood. It was a judgment against her father, and she feels that's a judgment against women. Can you see how this starts going together? And like all the pieces of the puzzle starts fitting together. It's so, so awesome. Anyhow, um, so then we're gonna get to her emerging self. And this is a very interesting trait for her. It is um, introverted feeling, which introverted feeling is extremely, they're extremely independent. They want to be independent and they want you to be independent. And this is what gets funny with relationships is they'll seek somebody. They'll seek a partner that's independent. They, they don't want somebody that's clingy or needs a lot of attention um, or that likes to just chit chat about stuff. They're not into that. They're not into that at all. What's really cool about them, what they find very sexually attractive is when another person can go head to head with them and have a very deep intellectual co uh, conversation. That to them is extremely sexy. It's extremely sensual for them. It just is, you know? They don't need all that. They're, they're not into all emotional drama and they won't even get caught up in that. They'll, they'll turn away, turn away. And it's not because they're not, they're emotionalists. It's just, it's just what their traits are. They have emotions, but they're not going to get caught up in the drama like some other people. They're not emotionally emotive. It's not who they are. So it doesn't mean they don't have feelings though. Let's stop that stereotype right now because they do. So for Kate, this trait plays a big role in her romantic life and how she's showing up. She's showing up very, very independent. And here's the trigger. Here's the rub. Because this, this trait, F-I, is, let me see where I wrote this down. Um, yes, I was going to say the right thing. I, I like to take notes because my mind, whoop. anyway, it, it's sentimentally principled. So the sentiment right away that she, that she felt, she made a judgment about Lord Anthony Brigginton 
But she made a judgment when she ever heard him discussing with his gentleman friends, you know, what he aspires in a wife. And then love wasn't in there, was it? Um, and he has his reasons for that. It's very obvious. And again, it goes back to childhood. Most things go back to childhood. It's just the thing, you know, either your parents or some incidents in childhood or something. It's just what it is. It's just how humans work, it seems. But she hit this principled sentiment very early with him. And you see how like she just flipped? Because she was very attracted to him. If you saw in the beginning, I hope I'm not doing a spoiler alert for you guys, but I won't give away too much. But she kind of followed him. She followed him dancing. And so she, you know, and there was already glances. You know, so she had an attraction to him, right? But that one incident, she shut it down. Shut it down. How many times do we do this to ourselves? Do we just shut things down? Without really using, like she needs to go back, take in more information from her intuitive intuition. And then through her extroverted thinking, she needs to think through this process. She's judging something, maybe with not all the information. So she stopped the information flow from her introverted intuition. And she made a judgment without having all the information. We all do this all the time. She's not the only one. We all do it. But then that's how it gets us stuck into things that we might not should be doing. It, it gets us, it takes us down the wrong path because we don't realize we're doing this. And guess what? This is something we're going to constantly work on 24 seven until the day we take our last breath. And then when we go to the other side, I'm like, oh God, I can't believe I didn't see that, <laughs> you know? But I want you to start seeing it now. I want you to start seeing it now because we are creative beings here for a big creative life. I know we've not been taught that, but that's the truth. I speak my truth. I know my truth because I've gone through a crazy seven year tsunami that shed a lot of light on a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about anything I haven't gone through, my life experiences, and I've been studying personality type now for decades. Hell, I'm even certified at this point. But I think it's such a necessary, necessary thing for us to know. Let's go back to Kate. I know, I go on my little rampages. Um, so let's look at Kate. Um, let's look at how do Kate, INTJs, how do they look at romance? How do they look at romance? Well, for them, romance is a very rational process. I mean, they'll know, and this is just what, how, how they work, right? They'll know within like the first date, ah, oh, just, should I give any more time to this? Yes or no? That's how they work. So they don't devote a lot of time into um, dating. They either know or they don't know, right? And that FI quality, the FI, you know, it is 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 complex, but it only it allows them to have very high quality relationships, and that's what they'll seek. They'll they'll they'd rather have two or three very close friends that they could truly be themselves with, and not feel judged or stymied or stifled by people that don't understand them. And I think that really honestly that goes for a lot of us but there are a lot of people that they'd rather have a whole gaggle of friends because that's what people are their muse so that's what feeds them so it's different right so for kate you know she's very rational and as you see she's she's being very rational in her ideology of suitor for her sister Edwina. She's being very rational. Well, this, 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 and who is this? And what's the pedigree? Well, the, 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 the. Oh no, they're nice. The, the, the. Okay. And Edwina, and I, I gotta look up her type because I didn't, but she's just like, what the hell are you talking about, man? Like, and she doesn't really say anything because she's trying to please her sister. Um, I should do one on her too. Anyway, but you can tell there's, there's a little bit of misstep there. And as you go through and if you watch, 
Bridgerton to the end, you'll see what I speak of. I don't want to do any more spoiler alerts. And I, the spoiler alerts on my blog, so I'll just keep my, I'll keep that for so you guys can go back on the blog if um, you haven't watched it. But so that's how INTJs kind of approach romance is they are very pragmatic, they're very rational, they're very logical, right? And that goes ahead and, and, and works with their uh, um, thinking aspect too. So they got a double dose of that, right? Um, I love it. And, but on the other hand, this type can be very funny. They're good storytellers. They're droll. I love this kind of humor. I love droll humor, right? So even though they, they don't seem like they're not, you know, emotionally expressive, they're so expressive. They're just expressive in their own way. So they're gonna seek a partner that's intellectual, like them. Like I said, they're gonna seek that partner that they can have these sexy, intellectual, very deep conversations with. To them, that is r really, that's, that's a turn on for them. It just is. And they're not, you know, since they're so theoried in their minds and stuff too, they're really not impressed. And just like Kate, Kate really wasn't impressed by Lord Bridgerton and and all the suitors and all the pop and stance. And she just, you know, she'd rather just get on her horse and ride, right? That's what she, that's what she'd like to do. Interesting. And, and her, and you can see this too, it's really interesting, her, um, she was so adept at everything, like activities and so forth, which is nuanced through her um, contrary trait of extroverted sensing. Because if you're an extroverted sensor, you are an active, hands-on kind of person. You want to be putting things together, taking things apart. You're really good at sports. You're very active and you get things very quickly. Like you're very athletically inclined. Like somebody has to show you once, you're like, I got it. I got it. And most of the time you do. So you can see Kate, how this circle, her traits circle is very prevalent. And for most people, that's very unconscious. She's, she's obviously tapping into that circle, full circle, because she's very adept. And, and they, don't, they don't call it croquet, but I'm calling it croquet. When they were playing croquet, like she's like, oh, you're not gonna win. And that, and that trait is also very competitive. It's also very spontaneous. And if they see an opportunity, like she saw the horses, she's like, I'm going, I'm taking it. So she saw the opportunity. So that trait makes them opportunistic too, which is interesting. But that's not a dominant trait, but it's still a trait that she's tapping into. And, and for her, it's very effective. She's using it in a very effective way. I believe divine intelligence gave you all four traits to use. And I believe divine intelligence put them in an order for you to use them in that order, but not to ignore them and not to use them as a circular thing and, and, and certainly not to, to avoid them. Say, oh, I'm just not, that's not gonna be conscious for me, so I'm not gonna use it. Bullshit, make it conscious for you. Make it part of your spiritual growth. Something you tap into and go, oh, and at least for anything, it's an under, more an understanding of you. And once you understand yourself better, you're gonna understand people with that trait better too. So it's really this really cool approach to personality typing um, that gives you a better understanding of not only yourself, but all the people around you, your family, your friends, you know, your business associates. We're, we're, we're surrounded by people. So isn't it best to understand everybody and yourself first? Yourself first. Because you, if you don't understand yourself, you certainly don't understand people around you. And you're more likely to follow the fear trail, which so many people do. They just say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing because look, everyone else is doing it. Bullshit. That's total bullshit. That kind of thinking stinking needs to, we need to, we need to say thank you. This taught me something and then let it go. Let it go. I'm not saying you shouldn't contribute 
to the collective as a whole. The only way you can contribute, contribute properly is by knowing yourself. Because you're blessed with the divine gift. We all have a divine sacred purpose. Every single person on the planet. Do you know yours? I don't know. Got to figure that out. I'm here to help you. I do soul sessions, like I said. So if you're ready for that, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Okay? Let's get back to Kate because I go off on a tangent. So this is interesting about this feeling tree. And I talked about some of this. Um, so feeling trait, that sentimental principle aspect of that trait, plus that independence, right? It's a complex trait. It's a complex, it's a complexity because it, it teaches you kind of how to feel about yourself. And Kate obviously felt very rejected and very hurt by the words, words are so important, that Lord Anthony Brigginton was saying about women. So she took that on very personally. All right, and that shifted something in her. So she was using that, his words, to influence how she felt about herself. He obviously did not think that about her. But how many of us do that? Somebody will say something and we'll take it very personally. Oh, is, is, God, that, did, they, did they mean that about me? And since she already had that sentiment inherited from her childhood, that triggered her. That's why she fell so deeply into that. So that inherited knowing, understanding, belief, value was holding her back because she had stopped taking in new information about that and especially about him. And obviously this was, a, this was something that was triggering her, triggering her and many other potential suitors. She said, oh no, I'm going to go back to my life in India. What if I come visit you? Well, if you come, okay. There was no welcoming. There was no openness to it. She had a very closed mind about it. So this is what stops people. And it stopped Kate. And I won't do the spoiler alert because it's, she finally realizes things about herself. She finally comes to love herself and to know herself. You know, sometimes it is through other people's words, but you have to learn this for yourself. And this is where the spiritual practices come in. Because she's very, the, the INTJ is very uh, aware of your environment. You're a seeker. You want the truth. So you're very aware of the environment and where your spiritual practice is, and it's really not a practice. Again, it's going to be an awakening and understanding because you already have it within you, you know, is to awaken to that knowing within you is your self-understanding. It's about building your own self-culture and letting go the external culture, the inherited beliefs, the conditioning patterns the past experiences that have really influenced you, but that no longer serve you. It's what I call the shedding of beliefs, the shedding of values. You have to shed, you've got to have a new skin. It's a new skin thing, you know? I talk about this with the butterfly, you know? the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis but what we don't see in the chrysalis is a total breakdown of a goopy thing it's no longer even a butter it's not even a caterpillar anymore but this is the coolest thing i read this in mark nepo on the book of awakening if you don't have that book i strongly recommend that you get it and i'll put it in the notes below what he says when i think this is so beautiful if you think of yourself as the caterpillar and then you're in the chrysalis 
and if you're going through a great change. You're breaking down things that you no longer need. You're shedding. You're shedding that skin. You're shedding that part of yourself. Exactly what's happening in the chrysalis because what's happening is like you're coming to a place where you don't even, you, you're just like a gooey ball. You don't really know yourself, right? You're this like gooey, gooey thing, you know, that's rising up to meet a new self, to renew your new self. And as you emerge as this new butterfly, you'll have beautiful colors, different colors of yourself that you present to the world. So your butterfly may be multicolored, might have different colors to it. I'm trying to get you to get the image of it. So you show up in the world differently, more beautiful, because you've experienced the change, the meltdown of your old to be refashioned it into a new. It's beautiful. It's not easy. <laughs> Believe me. It's not an easy thing. I went through set my seven year life tsunami, which is, you know, was that. It was a total disruption. It was letting go of the constructs of what I believed I was. I am not that. So Kate starts finding that out in Bridgerton. She starts seeing it. And she has very wise counsel around her that point out things that she doesn't see. So you should have wise counsel always in your life. People that you trust. It doesn't have to be a guru. But if you know your personality type, you'll gravitate to the person that's right for you. It's just how it works. It's just how it works. So I'm not gonna give you a spoiler alert. Uh, that's on the blog. Uh, but let me know if you think I nailed uh, Kate's personality type. I think I did. Hold on a minute. Oliver. Uh-uh. Um, my dog's digging for something. Who knows what? He's not supposed to be digging. He's so cute. But um, yeah, let me know if I nailed that. And I appreciate you all. And um, just want to thank you for being here. Like, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you want to share this with somebody else, that'd be awesome. I think this is it's a fun way to look at your personality type. It's a fun way to dissect a personality type because they're on, you know, they're on the big screen. So it's like, let's look at this. Let's look at this behavior and let's look at this. So it's a, just a fun way to look at personality typing because um, I can be kind of serious about it, which I, I'm still going to be serious. That's just, again, that's my personality type. But I, you know, I there's a lot of, um, I'm kind of eccentric and kooky too. So, uh you gotta have some fun with this, right? Because it's we're not supposed to be these serious, serious people all the time. Joy and laughter is part of the creative process. It just is. So I hope you like this. Let me know if you think I nailed Kate Shama's personality type. Like and subscribe, share. If you want a session, I'm here for you. I'd love to get you into your personality typing, start showing you your sacred purpose, and start walking you through some things so you can be a part of the creation of the new earth. It's gonna be really important. And we need everybody, all hands on deck on this one. This is, this is a time in history that is profound, and I believe different than anything the world has experienced before. I don't know, that's just my two cents. Take what you, take what you want, leave the rest. But I'll see you next week, and I hope you enjoyed this. And, um, Go enjoy Bridgerton. It's a great show. <laughs> I loved it. Anyhow, and if you've not, I did a thing on Anna Delvey too, because um, inventing Anna, I thought that was another great, I guess I'm into, you know, what's her name? Shonda, Shonda, Shonda Rhines? Oh, I don't even know. Shonda Land, whatever. Anyway, love you guys and uh, enjoy this. Bye for now.